There is no doubt that many rail enthusiasts will miss the intercity fleet when it eventually disappears off the rails. But what of their replacements? The replacement to the 125 and 225, the Class 800, 801 and 802, have only graced our rails since 2017. However, their arrival was over a decade in the making. The programme to procure replacements for the Intercity 125 and 225 on the East Coast Mainline and the Great Western Mainline were announced by the Department of Transport in 2005. The Department published a notice that it wanted an organisation to finance, build and maintain a fleet of high-speed trains for a period of at least 30 years. The trains would be used around the country by the various private railway companies and would bring uniformity to the network for its major routes. The tender, called the Intercity Express programme, comprised of many elements and specifications. The new train could not be less than 120 metres in length and cannot exceed 312 metres. The trains must be available in varying lengths to accommodate different journeys and passenger numbers to allow them to be more economical. The trains must have a coupling turnaround of no more than three minutes and the train must be able to switch from diesel to electricity or if the train is powered by both to be able to switch between power sources both stationary and at speed the train's weight cannot exceed 392 tons dependent on fuel type and its minimum top speed must rival that of the intercity considering that the order would be between 500 and 2000 units for the railway manufacturers, despite the strict specifications, this would be a very lucrative deal. On the 16th of November 2007, the Department of Transport um, issued the IEP invitation to tender to three shortlisted companies, Alstom Barclays Railway Group, the Express Rail Alliance and Hitachi Europe. Alstom was the first to withdraw from the bidding process back in February 2008. The Barclays Equal Equity Group rejoined the bidding process just days before the bidding was due to end after forming an alliance with Hitachi and John Lane as Agility Trains. On the 12th of February 2009, the government announced the winner of the tender would be the Agility Trains Alliance. The decision did not sit well with many investors. They cited Hitachi's payroll discrepancies at their factories, the concern of jobs being safeguarded and created within the UK, and the government being accused of being biased in the decision to award the tender. Despite the criticisms, Agility Trains got straight to work. They submitted the design of a Super Express train. The train would be considerably lighter than their 125 counterparts, be more fuel efficient, and have unique coaches which were slightly larger than the MK3 replacements. The body shells would be produced in Japan and shipped to the UK for assembly in a specially built factory. Unlike the 125 and 225, the body shells of the carriages would be constructed out of lightweight aluminium and the power cars made of steel. The design increased the seating space and allowed to for passengers to have seating facilities within the power cars themselves for the first time. Hitachi modified the design in 2010 as the UK turned to a more greener source of fuel. The diesel engines that sat under the feet of the passengers, which allowed the new trains to be self-powered, were changed so that they would be removable. It is hoped that as more of the track becomes electrified, the diesel engines would be surplus to requirements. On the 26th of February 2010, the plans for the new trains were put into turmoil. It was announced that negotiations for the new trains would not be completed before the general elections that were due that May. Passenger numbers were down and Network Rail was under pressure following a commitment they made to electrify the lines between London and Bristol. The opposition at the time were not happy with the arrangements. They thought the specifications for the new trains were too specific and that the power consumption figures the Department for Transport were predicting was impractical for the network. After a spending review and several highly charged debates, it was decided that the plans would be deferred until 2011 when reports into the plans could be completed. Sir Andrew Foster, who had been critical of the untested bi-mode power arrangement, recommended using existing electric locomotives or even refurbished 125s. The Secretary of State for Transport, Philip Hammond, considered this and decided that only two options lay ahead for the future. 
Either go ahead with the agility trains idea, or couple electric trains to diesels. On the 1st of March 2011, to great relief of agility trains, their plans were once again chosen and they were given the green light to continue with additional plans to electrify the lines as far as Cardiff. To compensate for the extra cost, the order was reduced to initially 500 carriages, costing £4.5 billion. Hitachi chose the town of Newton Aycliffe in County Durham for its new factory. The factory took two years to build and was opened in 2015. It cost over £82 million to build and is over 460,000 square feet. The factory employs over 1,000 staff and is situated close to where George Stevenson created locomotive number one. The first ever passenger train to be used on a public line. The factory was tasked with the Class 800, the modified 801 and the 802 trains and due to its success was being given many tenders since. The first Class 800 rolled onto the rails on the 11th of March 2015 and underwent testing on the old Dolby test track. Despite its success, the railway unions were not impressed at the proposals that the new trains would be outfitted with no buffet car or guards. The union encouraged the workers to strike for 48 hours unless their demands were met. Meanwhile, the rail transport minister was searching to give these new workhorses their new name. And on the March 2016th, the first Azuma was formally unveiled at King's Cross, with the Great Western and the LNER following suit in 2019, respectively. The Great Western didn't really adopt the new brand name and preferred to name their trains individually. Example of their named trains include Queen Elizabeth II, in Samabar Kingdom Bruvel, Captain Tom Moore and The Mask. So let's have a look closer at the 800 power car. Each power car carries a 12 cylinder 21 litre V12 turbo diesel engine with a power output of 750 brake horsepower. The train can easily meet its maximum speed of 125 miles an hour in just under two minutes. For bi-mode or electric units, the engines are outfitted with pantographs leading to a 25 kilovolt overhead line feeding the power directly into the engine. The interiors of the carriages are spacious, with a larger legroom and better seating table seating that have been well received by the standard classes. Compared to the intercity coaches, the seats are said to be harder and more uncomfortable for longer journeys and first class experience is said to be somewhat downgraded due to the lack of leather seating. The LNER Azuma services do carry a micro buffet but many food services on the journey are limited to trolley services and light snacks. The Class 800 family has very quickly become a staple and dominated the UK mainline rail network within a very short space of time. Because of their bi-mode qualities, they have even been able to travel along major branch lines, providing a vital link between towns and major cities, making them committing, commuting so much easier. I have had the privilege to travel on these trains and I have to say I was impressed with the clean interior and the onboard facilities. These modern sophisticated trains are here to stay, and who knows, maybe in 30 years time when these grand girls are set to retire, perhaps these modern trains will be heading for museums near you for future generations to enjoy.